All right, folks. So in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about this wire that I've got here, and we're going to talk about an antenna project that I am about to embark on. And if anybody has any comments, suggestions, or recommendations, I'd love to hear all about them down in the comment box. So I got this the other day off the internet, off of eBay to be exact, and it says Archer 300 ohm, super low loss foam TV twin line cable. It's 100 feet or 30 meters. And that's more than enough that I need to do this project. It also says down here, 20 gauge copper conductors with polyethylene foam insulated and weather sealed jacket for use indoors or outdoors with TV and FM antennas. But we ain't doing that. We're going to build an HF antenna like a doublet. I don't know if doublet's the exact definition of this antenna, but that's what we're going to do. So what I want to do is I want to cut a piece of this and I'm going to cut it open so we can see what the innards look like. Okay, so after cutting a piece of this, the first thing I notice is that it is not very flexible. So this is going to be a very rigid structure. And I want this to be a antenna that is used for portable operations. And uh, it's going to be for use between 40 and 6 meter bands, hopefully. So anyhow, what I did is I was able to cut this and uh, the black stuff does not peel off so whatever that foam uh, dielectric that is in there is super sticky and it won't come off very easily there you can see i've uh, gotten the 18 gauge wire out now there's a couple pieces of wire on the desk there's one right here i don't know if you can see that but uh, this one i didn't do such a good job in this one you can see the actual thickness of the wire and i want to use 100 watts on this so i'm hoping that a 20 gauge is going to be sufficient for that but i think it will be Anyhow, that's what the wire looks like. I want to show you what I'm going to use for a transformer. It's actually going to just be a choke that I'm going to put on this antenna. Let's take a look at that. So here's a little project box that I got. And let's just go ahead and pop this open. I, I like these project boxes because they have these plastic screws on here. They're actually keyed in and um, they work really well. You can see they're super easy to get out and you can... Tighten them pretty tight, and I like these boxes because they are waterproof. Now the question is, how waterproof will it be once I start drilling holes in it? I don't know. But you can see there is a grommet in here that helps it with its waterproofness. So when you buy these boxes, they come like this. Some of them will have a, a plate at the bottom that you can mount stuff to. My friend Chuck, and we'll talk more about him, he actually designed this with his 3D printing skills. And it would just go in here, and then I would use these M8 bolts to bolt that down into these two mount points that are in here. And then what I want to do is I want to take this choke, and this choke's been uh, tested out in a bunch of different videos of mine, and I want to zip tie it to this and drop this whole housing in here and make the choke. I was worried that these leads were a little too short, but uh, it looks like they're going to fit in there just fine and do the job. So I feel pretty good about that portion of the project. Now for some hardware, I get to look at this. What I think I'm going to use are these SO239s. And I'm just going to drill a hole and mount that to the bottom of the box. Now at the top, I'm going to need connections for the ground and the shield side. That's the same side. I'm going to need it for the shield and the center conductor. Now I might use something like this. These are five-way binding posts and you can just drill a hole and mount that in there. The other thing I might do is just use these quarter 20 bolt assemblies that I've got and put one on either side. Haven't quite decided. Um, if you got a vote, go ahead and put it below and let me know why and what and what do you recommend. I think I'm going with the quarter 20 uh, bolts. I think that's just going to be a better option for me. All right, now I want to talk a little bit about the wire that I'm thinking about using. And this is just cheap speaker wire. It's, uh, I don't want to say it's like 30 bucks for like 200 feet of twin line speaker wire, which is like 400 feet, which makes it really price competitive. And we use this in a lot of time, uh, videos where we're testing out different antenna designs. And I might use it for this. Um, it's 18 gauge. It's a little bit thicker than what is in the twin line, but I think I'm all right with that. I may use this BN Techo, and this is another wire that I use a lot. It's super flexible silicone wire, so it's really handy for portable antennas. The one thing about this is the velocity factor is a little bit different, so you have to adjust uh, the antenna lengths. But here is 18 gauge, and then here is some 22 gauge that I have. And uh, this is in black, so I just haven't decided which one I'm going to use. It's probably going to be one of those, and there goes my microphone. The other thing is, is that I have this 
um, TNNH 18 gauge wire. And I like this wire, although it is not very flexible. So this is, in my opinion, something you would use for a more permanent installation than something portable. But given how this isn't very flexible, uh, I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do yet. Let's take a look at one last piece, and then we'll look at some diagrams. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, this is my good buddy Chuck, KK6USY, and I talk to him all the time about whenever I'm doing any antenna projects, and I like to run things past him. And we were talking about potentially using a piece of PCB to connect the transmission line or that uh, 300 ohm twin lead to the antenna elements. And uh, Chuck says, hey, don't, don't use that uh, PCB. Let me see if I can whip up something in my CAD system. So he drew this connecting plate. Actually, I think this is a version two. There's a version three out there already. And it allows you to kind of feed the uh, twin line through this hole, use these little holes on the side, zip tie it in, and then connect it up here to some three eighths bolts. And then you could put um, uh, ring terminal connectors on the, on the transmission line, as well as the elements and connect them all together. Then you have these holes on the side for some extra strain relief. And so I think I'm probably gonna print this out and go along with this design. Now, this is the 300 ohm line that I wanted, but uh, I was able to get a deal on the other stuff. So that's why I bought the other stuff. But traditionally, this is what you would see. And sometimes they call this window line because it has these holes in it. Now, for this project, what we're going to do is build a doublet. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about that because there's some confusion, even on my side, as to what really constitutes a doublet. And I'm kind of defining it as... A doublet and ham radio is essentially a simple wire antenna consisting of two equal length radiating elements similar to a dipole, typically fed at the center with a balanced transmission line such as ladder line or open wire line. So we're using not an open wire line and it's actually not even ladder line, it's just called twin line. So unlike a resonant dipole that is cut for a specific band of frequency, a doublet is often designed to be non-resonant on most bands. Hams then use an antenna tuner to match the feed line impedance to their transceiver, and that's exactly what we're planning to do. So I went on the internet and I did a search for 300 ohm uh, doublet antenna. And it took me to this website called Aerial 51, HF wires made in Germany, HF wire antennas made in Germany. And I came down and I saw this one, and they call it the 410 Rock. So this is a doublet antenna for 4 through 10 meters. And we talked about wanting 4 through 6, but I don't know if I'm going to get that. Anyhow, it's just a simple doublet antenna. And what I like about this is the dimensions. So if you take a look at this, it's 10 meter, 300 ohm twin lead. And so that's like th uh, 32 and a half feet. So that gives me plenty left over from the twin lead that I bought. 300 ohms, I can do that easy. And then here's the one-to-one -one Guanella Ballon. Now, the one-to-one -one ballon that we're using in our ballon box is a one-to-one, -one, but it's not a Guanella ballon, and it should work fine, and if it doesn't, I'll replace it with something else. And then for the elements, I'm going to mount this thing in an inverted V, and it's uh, 7.5 meters. And this says CQ532. I'm assuming that's some sort of wire or something along those lines, but 7.5 meters makes this thing nice and small, and it should fit into my backyard with no problem. Also, it should be mountable from a single mount point on a mast and so i just want to make sure i have a nice robust mast and i want to keep the antenna itself lightweight but i think this is going to be the plan now like i said if anybody has any other input suggestions or recommendations i'd love to hear them with that i'm going to say thanks for watching everybody i do appreciate it and i'll see you in the next video